Let's say you're like me and you want to buy an RTX 5019 and you want to compare pricing on different websites. You would probably look it up on Amazon or compare the pricing on Best Buy. Or maybe you're looking at reviews on Reddit. Unfortunately, most of these websites don't let you scrape data anymore. Especially if you're using the normal web search tools, they're extremely limited. So for example, if you provide a direct link to Amazon, in cloud, the normal web search tool is not able to fetch data from there. Instead, it will just do a generic web search and give you generic information. But now, fortunately, we have free servers with tools specific to these websites. So not only it renders data as a markdown from that website that you provided, but can then use an LLM to extract information and give you the exact information that you are looking for. In general, if you want to collect information, you want to go beyond just simple Google search. You want to go to those websites and collect information and synthesize the responses. That's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to use this system, which is going to not only look for websites and then scrape those, but it's going to have a local rack system that is going to dynamically select the source of information based on the user query. For accessing data from multiple sources, we're going to be using the Bright Data MCP server, which is now free with very generous limits. The beauty of this system is that they have multiple different tools for different types of websites, which can collect information from websites like Amazon, Best Buy, X, LinkedIn, and so on. They are also the kind sponsors of today's video. And now you get 5,000 queries per month for free. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and use this MCP server with Clot and later on build an agentic system using LangGraph. Okay, first we need to get an API key. Now you can look for information in their platform using their chatbot. So I'm going to just ask it to tell me how to get the API key. Okay, so it's just pointing at account settings. You can get the API key from there. So here I already generated an API key, if you need to refresh it, just click on this. It's going to refresh the API key for you. They also have some pre-scraped data sets along with a specific data scrapers for specific websites. First, let me show you how to configure this on Cloud. So first you need to go to settings. Within settings, go to developer. And right now I have the Bright Data MCP server already pre-configured. But if you want to change the configurations, just click on edit config. I am going to be revoking the API key here. Here are the configurations. This is going to be in the video description. All you need to do is just provide your API token. And you will just need to restart Cloud. Let's run the same prompt that we looked at in the beginning. So right now I'm just enabling the normal web search. I am going to provide a specific link where I want the information to come from. If you send it to Cloud, it's not able to fetch data from Amazon because Amazon does not allow it to scrape data. So it's going to just use a web search and you can see it's not looking at Amazon, but a whole bunch of other websites. And I think it also will probably finds some Amazon links, maybe like this one, but that's even coming from another website, right? So this is not the information we're looking for. Now, what happens if you try to do the same thing, but with the Bright Data MCP server enabled? So it has specific tools to scrape data from websites like Amazon, Best Buy, X, LinkedIn, and so on and so forth. Now, if we send this, hopefully it's going to trigger the tool usage through the Bright Data MCP server. So as you can see here, it detected that we provided a link. So it's going to scrape data from this link in Markdown. So this is the exact information scraped from that page in Markdown. And now it's able to just render that information because the LLM can decipher everything from this markdown, which is pretty neat, right? Now, okay, so I asked it specifically to look for reviews about this card on Reddit, right? So first it did a quick web search, but it's specifically looking at Reddit. So all of the links that you see are coming from Reddit, but then it picked some of these links one by one. So for example, here it's NVIDIA subreddit, and scrape that as markdown. Then here's another one, build a PC. 
Again, it looked at, at that information, scraped it. I think we have quite a few more. So I think it did yet another web search and it kept scraping data specifically for Red, from Reddit, right? So it's very powerful because now based on your needs, you can point it to a specific source of information rather than just using the indexed information that is within a web search engine. Okay, so this is pretty neat, but how do you use it in a coding agent? So I put together this simple setup in which we're going to use an intent classifier that is going to look at the user query and based on that, decide whether to do a simple web search using Google or use an existing rack system. Now, in this case, when it decides to do web search, then it goes and collect information from specific websites by scraping data from there. Okay, so in the rest of the video, I'm going to show you this workflow, which is going to use multiple different parallel paths to look for information. And this has two different main components. The first one is a local rack system. So let's say if you ask any question regarding DeepSeq models, it's going to use the DeepSeq report to find information for you. The way this work is at the top, we have an intent classifier, which is, looks at the user query and then decides whether to use web search versus this local rack system. So if the query contains DeepSeq, then it's going to decide to use the local rack system and answer from the local rack system rather than going to online sources. On the other hand, if the user is looking for information regarding some general factual information or products or comparisons, then the intent classifier is going to use web search. For this, we will initially use a Google search, but then based on the intent or the user query, it might look at different websites like Amazon, Best Buy, Reddit, X, then use the web unlocker, which is basically a scraping tool to scrape the actual data as a markdown. And it can run these scrapers in parallel and then pass that on to the final processing to generate the final response and then show everything back to the user. The code for this project is going to be available in the video description. There are main different components. One is the MCP server. This is the same MCP server, but it's being controlled programmatically. Then we have the main graph that is created within LangGraph. So within the main graph, we're going to have all the different tools that are available and the different paths that the agent can take. For example, when the user query comes in, we need to route it to a specific path. And these paths are whether we want to use the RAG only system, we want to use the search mechanism along with the data scraping. So at the top, we load our RAG index which is in this case is in context learning. So we load the whole file. Then based on the user query, we figure out which path to follow. And then we have a number of different parallel paths that the system can decide to use based on the user query. And here's the actual definition of the nodes, what they are able to do. And now we also use specific system prompts, which guides the system, which path to follow, which tools to use, right? So this detail is going to be available in the video description. Make sure to have a look at it and then you can modify this based on your own needs. Okay, so you can use this system in two different ways. One is through the LangGraph Studio or directly through Python scripts. So here I'm using it directly through Python scripts. My question is, what is the sentiment regarding the release of the new GPT-5 models from OpenAI? So if we run this, it decided to use web scraping. So here's the user query and it's going to use the Google search engine. So based on the Google search results, you can actually see that it's looking at different URLs and scraping data from each of those URLs. So here's, I think a YouTube video, interestingly enough, here's another one. And we have a Reddit post along with an article from Wired, Medium, right? And the beauty is that the system is extracting data from these multiple different sources in parallel to generate the final response for us. And it says that the sentiment surrounding the release of GPT-5 appears largely negative with many users and analysts expressing disappointment and claiming it underperforms compared to the previous models, several sources reports backlash and OpenAI is scrambling to address the issue. 
this was largely true. Now, the other way is to just use the LangGraph Studio. So we're going to run this LangGraph Dev. Actually, I Lang D R A P H Dev. Okay, so this is going to open LangGraph. And now we can run a user query. So let's say if I were to ask something like, what is the best price on Amazon for RTX 1590? Okay, we can run the query. You can actually see how it goes through the graph. So right now it's doing Google search. And I hope it's going to just look at Amazon web links and then scrape data from those web links to get us the information that we are looking for. So we can actually see it did multiple different web searches and we can see that it's scraping data from Amazon directly, which is pretty neat. So right now it's actually doing the web unlocker, which is basically converting it to markdown and extracting information. Okay, so here are the final results. And then this is going to be passed on to the LLM to generate the final response. But let's say if we're to ask a question like, what was the training cost of DeepSeek? model. So now it should use the RAG system based on the intent classifier. It actually went to the RAG system and generated responses based on that. So you can see that initially it loaded the file, then the intent classifier decided to use the RAG system. So here is the RAG context that is retrieved. And then it's going to use this RAG context to generate the final response. Okay, so this was a quick tutorial on how to use the Bright Data web search capabilities to extract information from multiple different websites, scrape data from there, and then use it with your multi-agent system. So do check them out. I have been using them more and more, especially with their free 5,000 queries per month. I think it's a really good replacement to a web search engine. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.